The Rishi said, After the Daicha Chanda was slain, and Munda was laid low, and many of the battalions were destroyed, the lord of the Asuras, powerful Shumba, with mind overcome by anger, commanded then the mobilization of all the Daicha hosts. Now let the eighty-six Asuras, upraising their weapons with all their forces, and the eighty-four Kambus, surrounded by their own forces, go out. Let the fifty Asura families of the Kotivirias and the hundred families of Dhaumras go forth at my command. Let the Asuras Kalakas, Daurhurgyas, the Mauryas and the Kalakeyas hasten at my command and march forth ready for battle. After issuing these orders, Shumba, the lord of the Asuras and a ferocious ruler, went forth, attended by many thousands of big forces. Seeing that most terrible army coming, Chandika filled into space between the earth and the sky with the twang of her bowstring. Thereon, her lion made an exceedingly loud roar, O king, and Ambika magnified those roars with the clanging of her bell. Kali, expanding her mouth wide and filling the quarters with the sound, hum, overwhelmed the noises of her bowstring, lion, and bell by her terrific roars. On hearing that roar, the enraged Asura battalions surrounded the lion, the Devi Chandika, and Kali on all the four sides. At this moment, O King, in order to annihilate the enemies of Devas and for the well-being of the Supreme Devas, there issued forth, endowed with exceeding vigor and strength, Shaktis from the bodies of Brahma, Shiva, Guha, Vishnu, and Indra, and with the form of those devas, went to Chandika. Whatever was the form of each deva, and whatever his ornaments and vehicle, in that very form his Shakti advanced to fight with the Asuras. In a heavenly chariot drawn by swans advanced Brahma's Shakti, carrying a rosary and a kamandalu. She is called Brahmani. Maheshwari arrived, seated on a bull, holding a fine trident, wearing bracelets of great snakes and adorned with the digit of the moon. Ambika Kaumari, in the form of Guha, holding a spear in hand and riding on a fine peacock, advanced to attack the Asuras. Likewise, the Shakti of Vishnu came, seated upon Garuda, holding conch, club, bow and sword in hand. The Shakti of Hari, who assumed the incomparable form of a sacrificial boar, she also advanced there in a boar-like form. Narasinghi arrived there, assuming a body like that of a Narasingha, bringing down the constellations by the toss of her mane. Likewise, the thousand-eyed Aindri, holding a thunderbolt in hand and riding on the Lord of Elephants, arrived just like Chakra, Indra. Then Shiva, surrounded by those Shaktis of the Devas, said to Chandika, Let the Asuras be killed forthwith by you for my gratification. Thereupon, from the body of Devi, issued forth the Shakti of Chandika, most terrific, exceedingly fierce, and yelling like a hundred jackals. And that invincible Shakti told Shiva of dark-colored matted locks, Go, my lord, as ambassador to the presence of Shumba and Nishumba. Tell the two haughty Asuras, Shumba and Nishumba, and the other Asuras assembled there for battle. Let Indra obtain the three worlds, and let the Devas enjoy the sacrificial oblations. You go to the nether world if you wish to live. But if through pride of strength you are anxious for battle, come on then, let my jackals be satiated with your flesh.
because that Devi appointed Shiva himself as ambassador. Thenceforth she became renowned in this world as Shiva Durti. Those great Asuras on their part, hearing the words of the Devi communicated by Shiva, were filled with indignation and went where Katyayani stood. Then in the very beginning, the enraged foes of the Devas poured in front on the Devi showers of arrows, javelins, and spears. And lightly, with the huge arrows shot from her full-drawn bow, she clove those arrows, spears, darts, and axes hurled by them. Then, in front of him, Shumba, stalked Kali, piercing the enemies to pieces with her spear and crushing them with her skull-topped staff. And Brahmani, wherever she moved, made the enemies bereft of valor and prowess by sprinkling on them the water from her kamandalu. The very wrathful Maheshwari slew the Daityas with her trident, and Vaishnavi with her discus, and Kalmari with her javelin. Torn to pieces by the thunderbolt which came down upon them, hurled by Aindri, Daityas and Dhanavas fell on the earth in hundreds, streams of blood flowing out of them. Shattered by the boar-formed goddess Varahi with blows of her snout, wounded in their chests by the point of her tusk and torn by her discus, the Asuras fell down. Narasinghi, filling all the quarters and the sky with her roars, roamed about in the battle, devouring other great Asuras torn by her claws. Demoralized by the violent laughter of Shiva Duti, the Asuras fell down on the earth. She then devoured them who had fallen down. Seeing the enraged band of Matris crushing the great Asuras thus by various means, the troops of the enemies of Devas took to their heels. Seeing the Asuras harassed by the band of Matris and fleeing, the great Asura Rakta Bija strode forward to fight in wrath. Whenever from his body there fell to the ground a drop of blood, at that moment rose up from the earth a sura of his stature. The great Asura fought with Indra's Shakti with club in his hand. Then Aindri also struck Rakta Bija with her thunderbolt. Blood flowed quickly and profusely from him, who was wounded by the thunderbolt. From the blood rose up fresh combatants of his form and valor. As many drops of blood fell from his body, so many persons came into being with his courage, strength, and valor. And those persons also sprung up from his blood, fought there with the Matris in a more dreadful manner, hurling the very formidable weapons. And again, when his head was wounded by the fall of her thunderbolt, his blood flowed, and therefrom were born persons in thousands. Vaishnavi struck him with her discus in the battle. Aindri beat that lord of Asuras with her club. The world was pervaded by thousands of great Asuras who were of his stature, and who rose up from the blood that flowed from him when cloven by the discus of Vaishnavi. Kaumari struck the great Asura Rakta Bija with her spear, Varahi with her sword, and Maheshwari with her trident. And Rakta Bija, that great Asura also filled with wrath, struck every one of the Matri severally with his club. From the stream of blood which fell on the earth from him when he received multiple wounds by the spears, darts, and other weapons, hundreds of Asuras came into being. And those Asuras that were born from the blood of Rakta Bija pervaded the whole world. The Devas got intensely alarmed at this. Seeing the Devas dejected, Chandika laughed and said to Kali, O Chamunda, open out your mouth wide. With this mouth quickly take in the drops of blood generated by the blow of my weapon and also the great Asuras born of the drops of blood of Rakta Bija. Roam about in the battlefield, devouring the great Asuras that spring from him. So shall this Daitya, with his blood emptied, perish. As you go on devouring these, other fierce Asuras will not be born. 
Having enjoined her thus, the Devi next smote him Raktabija with her dart. Then Kali drank Raktabija's blood with her mouth. Then he struck Chandika with his club there. The blow of his club caused her not even the slightest pain. And from his stricken body, wherever blood flowed copiously, there Chamunda swallowed it with her mouth. The Chamunda devoured those great Asuras who sprang up from the flow of blood in her mouth and drank his, Raktabija's, blood. The Devi, Kaushiki, smote Raktabija with her dart, thunderbolt, arrows, swords, and spears when Chamunda went on drinking his blood. Stricken with a multitude of weapons and bloodless, the great Asura Raktabija fell on the ground, O king. Thereupon the Devas attained great joy, O king. The band of Matris who sprang from them danced, being intoxicated with blood. Here ends the eighth chapter, called The Slaying of Raktabija, of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana, during the period of Savarni, the Manos.